Hello, welcome to another session in Decisions Training. Today, we will be learning more about different type of notifications in decisions. Throughout this presentation, I will be jumping back and forth between the slides and Decision Studio so that you all can easily resonate with what I am speaking to. So let's quickly jump into our today's session and begin this session by understanding different type of notifications supported on decisions, what are their inputs and how do we use them. Decisions support notifications in the form of emails, pop-up, SMS and text, instant messages, Twitters, as well as custom notification methods. Decisions platform consists of an extensive list of default notification types, which are the actions that trigger the system to send a notification, including for accounts created, site published, or groups deleted. Let's understand more about email notifications. Many times we might want to send out notifications to users via emails like automated reports that were generated on weekly basis so that we can eliminate the manual interventions. In such scenarios, we use a send email step in our workflows, which allows us to send customized information to recipients or the email addresses that we have passed in. We can trigger these emails as on when required, or we can also set up scheduled jobs so that it would run automatically at a particular time period and automate these emails for us with dynamic info. So before we navigate into our designer studio, let's understand the commonly used inputs for any kind of notifications. And this includes components like from to the list of emails or list of recipients to whom we would like to address these notifications, high priority marking it, whether it is a high priority email or whether it is a non high priority emails, the subject, the body and attachments. In addition to this, we also have the ability to set up templates. For uh, example, in case of emails, we can select our email templates that we have created for branding awareness. Let's go ahead and quickly jump into the studio and create a flow in order to test our email. And when we do this, we have the ability to drag our send email step into the workflow. So as mentioned earlier, emails are emails. So we have basic components like from here we can make it as a constant or we can also keep it as a dynamic information that we are trying to pass in via any other components in the flow, part of this flow. So let's keep it as a constant. And instead of making the two as constant, we also have the ability to make this more dynamic. Since this is a list of strings, we can add constant input data or we can fetch in information throughout this flow, which is coming in uh, from previous subflows or any other data. Or we can also integrate this with external services like Active Directories and fetch in the user groups and information into this. So we can mark this as a high priority or not. We can also keep this as a subject. Uh, over here, I'll be mentioning it as hello. And in body, we would like to add some dynamic information over here. So let's keep it as merge HTML text, which allows us to pass in some dynamic information. Over here, let's keep it some information like welcome to decisions. And say that your account has been activated on date and over here let's select the flow data and also the time of this which is start time over here we have date and let's keep the formatting and just keep the date let's save this we have the ability to add a list of attachments. So over here, let's pass in a single info. We can keep it as a constant or we can also 
build array and add specific item over here. So let's choose a file and add a driving license. Over here, we can mark a CCs as well as BCCs and also select the type of templates right over here under settings. So let's select an agile email template, which is already available and the email looks good. So let's connect this to the send path and test this email. As soon as we click on debug, we would be able to see on how the process gets executed. As you notice, the email was sent and we also received an email right into our inbox. So if we go back to our inbox and see on how the email has been configured, we can exactly see all the information that we have customized onto this email, like the date, which is passed in from the flow and also the attachment that we have shared. So this is all about emails. So we can also come back to the debugging uh, debugger and see what are the inputs and outputs for this particular email step by clicking over here. And it has the same info that we have just seen. So this is how we configure email steps on decisions. In the similar fashion, we can also configure pop-up steps. So when we click on a pop-up, let's go ahead and see how we can show a pop-up. So it asks for subject as well as message. So let's connect this back to show pop-up and the done step to here. Over here, we have a subject. Let's keep it as a hello. And message would be over here. We can keep it as a constant. So let's keep this as welcome to decisions. Similar to that of emails, we can also keep pass in dynamic information by selecting the option of merge HTML text or plain text. Since we have already used that, I'll be just keeping this as a simple constant message. And as you see over here, we can select the pop-up type, whether we want to show it as a side pop-up or whether we want to display it at the center. Let's keep it as a side and we can also specify the user. So we can pick that uh, specific account to whom we would like to display this pop-up. For now, let's keep it as a simple and display it right in front of us as soon as we click on debug. So the pop-up step looks good. As we debug, we would be able to see our pop-up. As you see, we have a pop-up right on the right-hand section and it, the subject is hello and the message is welcome to decision. We also have a timestamp that came in. So this is all about a show pop-up as well as send email steps on decisions. So let's jump back into the slide. In addition to sending emails as well as uh, showing pop-ups, we have other details such as sending emails to accounts or sending notifications to accounts and groups. So let's move into our next topic on how we can send notifications to accounts and group on decisions. The send notification to accounts and group step over here not only sends emails, but also can send an SMS or text messages or can show pop up to the users. So the inputs for this step are going to be similar to that of an email. However, instead of list of emails, this would take list of groups or accounts to which info needs to be sent. It also takes the message as well as the subject. This step is good when we just want to send a message to the user with subject and the message. However, we will not be able to send attachments. In such scenarios, we use a direct step that is a send email step so we can share attachments or reports to the users. Speaking on to the key differentiators, the send email step only sends one type of message, that is emails, whereas send notifications to accounts and groups can send multiple message types. A send email step can send attachments while notifications cannot. 
For example, as mentioned earlier, if we need to send a PDF document that is generated or passed in a flow, we can use send email step. If we want to just send a message, we can use a send notification to accounts and group. Now, I would like to take you back to the studio and show on how the send notifications to accounts and groups works. So let's get back into our test email flow and pull in send notification step. So as you see, we have the step right over here and let's pull in the send notifications to accounts and groups. As discussed, we can select the notification type, whether it is a email or pop-up or SMS. And we also have the ability to select to the group or the user. We also have the inputs uh, which we can ignore or we can also, in case if we have selected the group over here, we can ignore this or we can also directly pass it right over here. We can customize the message. We can also customize the subject. So this is about the send notifications to accounts and groups. Now let us see on how we can schedule the emails automatically. So let's go back into our system folder. Under system, we have our jobs and events. Under jobs and events, we have message queues, scheduled jobs. So if we move under scheduled jobs, we have two types. That is scheduled jobs, which can run at a specified time. And there are interval jobs, which would specify the amount of time that should pass between the instances. So we are currently under scheduled jobs. And as you see, we have a list of scheduled jobs that are being triggered. Under interval jobs, we currently do not have any, but we can customize it as per our requirements. So let's go ahead and create a new job and add a new interval job. As you see, we can add the information like job name. We can pick the flow or create our flow. And we can also run this how many times. And we can also schedule the interval on how frequently this job should run. So once we save this, the interval job would appear right over here. In the similar fashion, we can also go into our scheduled jobs and can click on the new scheduled flow. So over here, we can add our scheduled job name, pick or create a scheduled flow, which we are des designated to run on frequent basics. And we can also create task or notify users if the job has failed. We can select the start date when this particular job has to run. So we can start it from the current time or we can schedule it. Let's say in our case, we want to send an email, maybe tomorrow noon, we can select that particular date and time so that the job would begin at that specific date. We can also set up the expiration date for this so that this job would run only during that particular duration between the start date and the expiry date. And now under schedule configuration, we have the ability to select when, how frequently this scheduled job should run, whether it is scheduled daily or weekly or monthly or between time span scheduled. So we can select the time span schedule and we can run this job or we can schedule it as a daily. So we also have the ability to select the days on when it has to run. Since we have selected a daily schedule, we have the calendar information and we can select or unselect the days that we don't want this job to run. This is all about how we schedule jobs. And now let's move on to how we can configure SMS or text messages in order for the system to send SMS or text messages. So for this, initially we have to know user's phone number and it should be configured. So while creating our user accounts, we need to pass in the information of that particular user's phone number. So the general setup of our enabling SMS notification is as follows. 
So let's go ahead under system, administration and under notification, there are SMS carrier. So let's configure the SMS carrier. As you see right over here, we have all the different type of configuration and we can add a new SMS carrier as well. So we can define the name or we can also define the email suffix for this. And once we click on save, this would get saved. So the next important thing that we have to make sure is the user contact info is entered. So for this, we just have to go right into our jobs and we have the ability or let's go into our security and we have our accounts right over here. We have all the user accounts. Let us pick one of the accounts and edit this account. As you see, we haven't configured our phone number over here. So as you see, the phone details are empty. So once we click on add, we have the ability to add the phone number, pick the type, whether it is a mobile or office or any other number. We can also select the type of accept rate that is SMS and we can also uh, pick on the extension and we have to mark whether it is a secured or not. And we have the ability to select if it is a primary or secondary emails. So this is about on how we can configure send notifications uh, to the users via SMS or text. So today we'll be covering another uh, topic on how do we set up or how do we change the notification settings in the portal. Setting up notifications is much easier. So let's navigate back into our system folder. So we are currently right under our system folder and our administration. If we go directly into notifications, we have default notifications. So right over here, we can click on a new notification type. So let's select a notification and here we can select the notification type when we would like to trigger the notifications, whether it was for account created or activated or whether it is for first login, whether the group has been disabled, etc. So we can select the type. We can also select the mode on how we want to notify the user, whether it is via email or pop-up. And then we can also exclude people whom we would not like to notify this with and also select the flow which needs to be triggered as soon as we initiate this notification. So this is all about notifications and how these can be triggered, changed uh, from the way they are configured initially and can be set up on decisions. So you can always refer to documentation.decisions.com in case if you have any queries related to any of the information related to notifications or send email steps or notifications uh, to accounts and groups. So it has all the information related to these queries. So once again, thank you for joining this session and have a great day.